Hello everyone, welcome to Mahuan Design EMC channel. Today we're going to talk about ESD guns. I know it's quite exciting, isn't it, when you host something like this. So ESD testing is one of the most important immunity tests for uh, EMC uh, regulation tests. And when it comes to ESD testing, we uh, often design engineers can just borrow an ESD gun um, from a rental company and then do some quick tests. But um, when it comes to ESD testing, there are some very important things that you need to pay attention because it depends on uh, the discharge mode. Your, the current waveform you see might be quite different with what you had expected. Also, before you start uh, the ESD testing, it is highly recommended that you also get what we call ESD current target unit, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a big uh, a ground plane with some complicated attenuator and connected to your oscilloscope and then you test the discharge waveform and then compare that waveform with the standards. So to make sure that the ESD gun you have, whether you borrow it or it's your own in-house ESD gun, uh, actually uh, has the discharging current that uh, is defining standard. But of course, it's quite tricky to, to get a ESD current sensing target all the time. So in this session, we just introduce a very simple test method that you can quickly check uh, of your ESD gun before you start ESD testing, okay? Okay, so here is the test setup. We need a test ground plane and uh, we uh, bombed uh, the test ESD guns uh, to the ground plane. The ground plane is earthed. And here we have an RF uh, current probe. In this case, the RF current probe has 800 megahertz bandwidth. But if you have a, a 500 megahertz bandwidth RF uh, current probe, that will also do the job. And here we have a oscilloscope. The oscilloscope also has only 500 megahertz bandwidth, just enough bandwidth to carry out this test. If you have one gigahertz bandwidth oscilloscope or above, that would be better. And as you can see, between the RF current probe and the oscilloscope, we have 30 dB attenuator fitted. This is because we need to uh, select the channel to be 50 ohm input uh, impedance. And once you select the 50 ohm input impedance, then the, the vertical limit really is limited to about five volts in this case. So it won't capture uh, the, the induced voltage waveform, let's say, in the uh, oscilloscope. Therefore, we need uh, quite a big attenuation here, as you will see later. Okay, our first ESD gun is uh, from Schroeder. It's a very old machine. As, as you can see, we selected four kilovolts contact discharge. Okay, so let's have a look. So basically what I'm doing is really just discharge a, a, a current into the ground plane. And then this RF current flow basically will capture the current waveform and shows on the uh, oscilloscope. Okay, there we go. So that's our uh, ESD discharge current waveform measured by the RF current probe. Uh, okay, our second um, ESD gun is uh, from uh, Keytech MiniZap. It's a very old machine. As you can see, we select a more or less the similar voltage here, four kilovolts, right? And we were going to do the same trick. So. Again, ESD gone to the uh, RF current probe and we are going to discharge. All right, okay. Okay, so this is our second ESD current waveform and it's from uh, the Keytac MiniZap. As you can see, the waveform clearly is different from that of uh, Schroeder. Again, we will compare the results in an in a in-depth analysis later on, okay? Okay, so let's have a closer look at the current discharge waveform. On top, we have the 4 kilovolts ESD current waveform according to the IEEE or IEC 61000-4-2 standard. And on, on bottom, we have the two discharge current waveform we just obtained from the test we did. On the left, as you can see, this particular um, ESD gum has some issues uh, mainly affecting the first rise time of, of the first peak as you can clearly see from here 
And um, the second DSD gun we had um, performs much better compared to the first one. Uh, it rises very quickly to the peak current and then does very similar profile compared to the uh, standard defined current waveform. If we uh, do a very quick math. You can see here we have about uh, 5.4 4 volts peak voltage and uh, we use 30 dB attenuator so you can work out the, the ratio factor of 30 dB and then you multiply by that value it gives you the voltage and then the RF current monitor probe has about 20 dB ohm impedance that's 10 ohm, let's just say, so you divide the voltage by 10, that gives you the current, which is about 15 amps, so very close to uh, what the standard defines value. And of, of course, if you work out this second peak value, it won't be too far off from uh, what the standard defines. And also, the standard has 116 nanoseconds here, and here it has a little bit delay, so uh, we had 20 nanoseconds uh, uh, per division so the waveform really uh, is very similar to what the standard defines as you can clearly see really depends on the condition of your ESD gun um, in this case both ESD guns have more or less similar history but the the second ESD gun definitely performs much better compared to the first ESD gun I should point out that this is only uh, for 4 kV contact discharge. We also later on did some 8 kV discharge and then actually um, the first ESD gun improved. Um, so really, you know, this, this thing is all related to the tear and wear of, of the ESD gun that has been in use, been in service. Uh, of course, you need to calibrate every single year. Um, but in this case, the relay that used in the ESD gun perhaps have experienced lots of use and you know, they deteriorated and then therefore affecting the performance.